Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. This is your friendly neighborhood Oxhorn, and today I want to talk about supply lines and provisioners because I am reading your comments, and thank you all for your comments, but I believe that there's some mass confusion about uh, the fundamental mechanics behind the Fallout 4 provisioner system. So let's take a look at our map, and I've blown it up so that this is much easier to see. And let's use Sanctuary as an example. So press C to show supply lines. And as you can see, I have quite a lot of supply lines. When I first started the game, obviously Sanctuary was my first settlement. So I started sending out supply lines from that settlement only, but you don't have to. So the way it works is as long as any settlement is connected to any other settlement by supply lines, then you will have access to the items in the workshop of any other settlement that is connected to the one that you're connected to. All right. That's the basics of how it works. I know it's a confusing, but um, think of all of these white lines as wires. And think of all of these settlements as conduits. Now, as long as a wire touches a conduit, that conduit is going to have electricity, and it's going to share electricity with all of the other conduits. Now, if we had, say, these three that were only connected to each other, then they wouldn't share electricity with any of the other settlements. They would only share electricity with themselves. And it's the same with uh, scrap and items in the workbench. If only these three settlements are connected, then when you're in workshop mode, you will see the items and scrap in the workshops of only these three settlements. But if you suddenly connect to this one, which happens to be connected to all of the others, then all of the workshops and all of the other settlements connected by this big spider web of a network will now be available in this workshop. Another thing that I see in the comments that I think people are confused about is how junk items are actually physically transported between settlements. So here I am on an alt and I'm at the Sunshine Tidings Co-op. And uh, let's take a look at this workbench. As you can see, it's completely empty. So if I try to pull up the settlement builder, uh, I can't build anything. I've got zero materials. So zero wood, zero steel. Um, there's just absolutely nothing that I can build. Now, that's because this settlement is not connected to any others by supply lines. Let me pull up supply lines. And as you can see, the only supply line I have running right now is between Sanctuary and country county crossing right that's my only supply line on this character and here i am at the sunshine tidings co-ops and uh it it therefore has it does not have access to the inventory in those in those settlements so let's go set up a, a supply line really quickly okay marcy and there she goes So she is now a provisioner for the Sunshine Tidings Co-op. Let's go back. All right, let's verify that it worked. And there it goes. So we've got a new supply line between Sanctuary and the Sunshine Tidings Co-op. And let's try build mode here. Can we build floors? And indeed we can. Look at that. Look how much wood this settlement has. Wood, steel plenty but you'll notice that the workshop still has zero inventory many people say on in comments that when you set up a supply line that you see all of the inventory in your workbench that is at all of the other settlements and that's not true as you can see in this demonstration the supply line only works for scrap that you can use in the settlement build tool that's it now Yes, it is true that if there's food and water in other settlements that are connected to yours by a supply line, that the resource counters at the top of the screen will turn blue or green or whatever color you have. They won't be red. But those resources are not transported to your workbench. And so your settlers will still complain about being hungry and thirsty. The only thing that fixes that is the physical resources in your workbench 
that you either place there yourself or that are produced by your settlement. So then, what's the point of all of this? The point of this is just so that we have a basic, more fundamental understanding of how the supply system works so that we have realistic expectations when we create provisioners in our settlements. No, we are not gonna have access to everything in workshops from one workshop connected to another one by a supply line. So you can't expect to put a laser gun in one workshop, set up a supply line, look into this workbench, and suddenly you're going to see the laser gun. Uh, and that's the same when it comes to resources like oil or junk or scrap items. Every settlement is going to have to be self-sufficient if you're worried about happiness. So just setting up a supply line is not going to take care of that settlement's resources. You still have to build a farm and you still have to build a water source. Now, the food that is generated in another settlement is available in workshop build mode. So even though this settlement had absolutely no resources because I set up a supply line, I can now build a corn stalk when before I couldn't. So now, thanks to the supply line, I can build a farm so that this settlement will start to generate food. But this settlement has to generate its own food for my settlers at this settlement to get the happiness bonus that you get from food, right? Okay, I hope I made this clear. I hope I explained things. I know that many of you had already got this figured out, but in, in some of the comments, especially on my settlement happiness videos, um, there just seemed to be pretty widespread confusion about how this worked. So I hope this was useful. If you have any questions, if you feel like I can explain something a little better, please let me know in the comments below and I will do my very best. Thank you so much for watching and be sure to subscribe for more videos like this. Have a good one.